this game was really up and down. Like, at first it was looking good, then of course the third quarter came, and then we started to make a comeback, and then it slipped away at the end. Uh, save me your overreactions. I already know the season's over, everyone should be traded, the, the sky is falling. Ignore all logical reasoning as to why we could be losing and throw out every extreme in the book. Um, so I'm just going to say what I have to say. One, the message is clear from the NBA and its refs. If you're a big-name player or a big-name team, you get special treatment. And if you're not, you don't. It's not about basketball anymore. It's not about competition being fair. It's about money. It's a business. And just the NBA is upping its level of importance towards the business aspect and lowering its level of importance for the basketball aspect, which is kind of counterintuitive because basketball is their business. So the more you contaminate that product, the more you hurt your product, which hurts your business. But the refs were just really terrible tonight. That's all there is to it. They were absolutely horrid. Anytime we played them physical, refs called something. There's some stuff that, yeah, it's fouls. But some stuff is just physical basketball, and you have to accept it as physical basketball. And that's all it is. And just because your players can't handle physical basketball doesn't mean that our players should be punished for being physical and tough and actually playing basketball. We shouldn't. Be penalized just because you are soft. That's all there is to it. Because when you play these teams physical, you know, these types of teams, these big name teams with soft players who flop, when you play them physical, you play man-to-man -man defense, you're right up in them, they fold. They flop, they try to draw fouls, and they fold. You can't play them physical though because the refs won't call the refs call it in their favor and it's terrible because as a team you should be pinpointing the weaknesses but the weaknesses that you can pinpoint and try and take advantage of the refs take it away it's terrible and then Nets fans chanting Brogdon at the end I I hope every single one of those people who Chanted Brogdon in that arena. Normally, I would not wish injury on someone. But when you chant at a player who is injured, that is absolutely disgusting. That is absolutely terrible. You know how much rehab, how much work it takes to come back from an injury 100% mentally and physically? It takes so much work. It is draining physically. It's draining mentally. And to get back to where you were before, it's, a, it's an upward battle for a long time. It, it. Injuries are terrible, and people who don't understand them will continue to do stuff like that because they don't understand how, how draining it is to not be able to just do even just normal things when you're injured and you can't play the game that you love. And you are just stuck and you're helpless and you can't do anything about it except for Rehab every single freaking day. Just rehab and rehab and rehab. Constantly doing all these stretches, all these workouts, just constantly. Working towards a goal that seems so far away. So, that's why I'm so disgusted when people make fun of injured players or when they chant stuff at injured players. Like when Celtics fans chanted Oladipo during that playoff series. Um, when Oladipo was injured, 
It's just terrible. Absolutely disgusting, and there's no room for it in the game. It's absolutely disgusting. And there's no other way to put it. Um, Tory Craig had a pretty good game, I'd say. My my guy Tory Craig had a nice twenty seven points. Did get his ankles broken by KD, but he's a very vicious and tenacious defender. And when you're as vicious and tenacious like that, you're gonna get caught slipping every once in a while. That's just the nature of playing like that. But the thing that you do to make up for it is you just go back and do it again. Defend him. Try and make a highlight play out of it. Steal the ball. Block the ball. Force a turnover to something. That's all you can do. DJ McConnell had a decent game too. Sabonis had an amazing block in a decent game. So did Chris Duarte. Um, Brad Wanamaker needs to be put off the team immediately, taken off the rotation. In fact, send him to the G League and call up someone who actually wants to play good basketball because that guy has made some horrid decisions that I am absolutely hating. And honestly, if he was not in the game, we might have been able to complete the comeback. But he made some terrible decisions that held us back, and he should be taken out of the rotation. Put put anyone else in his spot in the rotation. I, I hope, you know, when we get healthy again, he's one of the guys that gets kicked out of the rotation permanently because he is terrible. He is absolutely terrible. He is the Julian Davenport of the Pacers right now. He is terrible. I don't like the way he plays basketball. I don't think anybody does. I don't like the way he even plays the way he plays basketball. It's, it, it's, it's terrible. His style of basketball is terrible. And the way that he plays his style is terrible. And he can't seem to do anything right. Sometimes he'll hit a few shots here and there. But other than that, he's terrible. And he needs to be taken out of the rotation immediately. Immediately. Um, everyone else really had a had a decent game, I'd say. Even Jeremy Lamb. He's had a few good game on offense good games on offense. He just really needs to work on his defense. Jeremy Lamb really needs to work on his defense. Now, I'm not questioning his physicality. His physicality is there, which is actually pretty impressive for a guy. Um only like a year or two removed from an ACL injury because mentally that's that's tough. Because uh, his physicality is there. I've seen it. His physicality is there on defense, but his technique is not there on defense. Perimeter defense, just opening his hips and letting guys through when they, when they try to drive to the basket, his technique's not there. He needs to work on his technique and his defensive ability, really, because he's got the physicality. He's got the physicality. He just needs to work on his technique. Um, but yeah, overall good game. And I think it's decently impressive that we had, we, we didn't get blown out because last year we got blown out even when we were healthy against the Nets. Like we, we would get, we would lose by like 30 to 20 points last year. Every single time we faced them, we lost by like 30 or 20 points, even when we were healthy and we're missing Karis Silver, TJ Warren and Malcolm Brogdon three starters from our lineup, and we almost won. I really think that should be the takeaway from today's game. Because that's an improvement. That's a huge improvement. And it shows that the coaching styles probably helped because just last year we were getting blown up by these teams. And in fact, some people would, would argue that the Nets improved. So logically, we, we really should have been getting blown out by like 40. But we didn't. And we didn't even have three starters missing a combined like 60 points per game from the lineup. That's pretty good. Still lost, still going to go in, in the loss column. And I'm not saying that it was perfect. I'm not saying that it was the best of our games, but I am saying it's showing major improvement for this group. And I just, I do think it's something that we can take away from this, that we are improving and we just need to be patient. Be patient for injuries, because if you want to rebuild, you're gonna be ha you're gonna have to be patient for that anyways. So just practice your patience now, waiting for guys to get healthy. Look at it that way. Okay. See you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny. And tomorrow we got Pacers, we got Purdue football. It's gonna be fun. See you guys next time. Just got unlucky with on a few plays tonight. 
You know, one of those one of those plays. I thought he was standing still, but he just hit the shit out of that one guy, and the guy went flying. They blew the whistle, and they called it on him. 